We are at the Koi at Trump Soho, and I'm here with Chris Maispink, and today we are going to be talking about Pinot Noirs from Oregon. Why is Pinot Noir from Oregon such an excellent choice? You know, Oregon has is, is become a globally recognized uh, region for Pinot Noir, and I think one of the real amazing things is that uh, it's done that in a short amount of time. The yeah. first vines were only planted about 45 years ago, and so really we're talking about one lifetime worth of work. and. Now you can find our wines all around the globe and certainly all around the country. But it all starts with the place. It all mm. starts with the location and we're exactly halfway between the North and the South Pole. So we're on the 45th parallel. Uh, that's where Burgundy is too. But Pinot is really about the place that it's grown and produced and really speaks to the place. So that location affords us a few things. Um, one is we have very long days. Um, mm. During the summer, for instance, on June 21st, um, our day is about an hour longer than, say, Napa. So we have mm. a lot of sunlight, but we don't have the heat that you get when you get further south and closer to the equator. Mm. And Pinot Noir loves sunlight, doesn't do well with high heat. Right. So we ripen during the day. Um, we get a strong diurnal shift, so in the evenings it cools about 40 degrees. And Pinot Noir loves that. It, mm. it keeps the acidity in the wine, it keeps the alcohol low. If you were to have a comparative tasting of a California Pinot Noir, a Burgundy sure. Pinot Noir, an Oregon Pinot Noir, what really makes the Oregon Pinot Noir different from those other varieties? That's a great question. If you think about Burgundy, Burgundy is typically characterized by minerality in the wines, mm -hmm. uh, fresh acidities and fresh fruit uh, flavors. California is more classified by big ripe flavors, not a lot of acidity, um, and typically higher alcohol levels. Mm -hmm. Oregon straddles the fence between mm -hmm. both of those. We have a foot both in the old world and in the new world. We have the minerality, we have the acidity and the ageability of the old world, but we get the ripeness of fruit of the new. And so it's a region where you can lay the wines down for 10 years if you want, or buy them the day you, or drink them the day you buy them. Um, so really unique. We straddle the fence between old world and new. And when you think of Oregon wines generally, I mean, they've been gaining in popularity so heavily, even just in the last few years. Yeah. What do you account for that, for Oregon sort of having this moment where people are really starting to pay attention to the wines? Yeah, I, I think there's probably two parallel paths. Um, folks are more focused on food than mm -hmm. we've ever been before. And these are food wines. They pair well with food because of the acidity. Um, the alcohol levels aren't robust. I think as uh, the food movement gets stronger and stronger in this country, Oregon's well positioned to, to be a natural um, pairing with, uh, uh, with food. And let's talk about the three wines that you've brought here. So, sure. you know, we're going from the wide of Oregon to the very specific yeah. wines. What are the differences in the different Pinots that you produce? Sure. Um, We've been in business for 21 years now. Uh, this past year was our 20th anniversary, and we have been an estate-based producer the entirety of that time. That means we grow all of our own grapes uh, that we turn into wine. And within that system, we really have two different methodologies. Um, we own six estate vineyards. We bottle a vineyard designate from each of those six sites. Um, we also blend all six vineyards together and, and uh, uh, offer the premier cuvee to see uh, what the sum is of those sites. Thank you so much for teaching us about your Pinot Noirs and Pinot Noirs of Oregon. Really appreciate it. Yeah, pleasure to be here.